Welcome to the first of a three-part video series of how to debug real-time applications in a single integrated development environment using Visual Studio and RTX 2012, which transforms Windows into a real-time operating system. So before I get started, let's just go ahead and what we'll go over in this three-part series. In video one, we'll talk about single process debugging. In video two, we'll talk about multi-process or symmetric multi-processing debugging, so when you're in a multi-core, multi-processor environment. And finally, in video three, we'll talk about how to debug when you combine a Windows application with a real-time RTX application and how to debug that complex scenario. Before we get started, let's talk about debugging a traditional real-time application. So for many of you, this should look familiar to you. So let's go ahead and go through this. So here on the left-hand side, we have the user interface or HMI. So the good news here, we're able to use the Visual Studio IDE to do all of the debugging here. So we have traditional COTS hardware. Everything is good on this side. On the real-time side, Many, many times people are using things like DSPs and FPGAs. So although they're very powerful, the problem is they bring along proprietary IDEs with them. So a totally different debugging environment. So what's the big challenge here, of course, is how do you coordinate and synchronize the debugging between these two environments, especially when you talk about the fact that they're communicating a lot of times through proprietary interfaces. So a lot of challenges here with debugging, a lot of tricky debugging situations and trying to track down some very, maybe, elusive problems. Okay, So now let's look at this same application on the RTX platform. So here we've we converted the platform and again RTX transforms Windows into real-time operating system. So here we have RTX 2012 and so the first thing you notice that's drastically different is we have a single integrated development environment and that is because RTX 2012 provides a Visual Studio plugin that enables Visual Studio for all of the debugging for the real-time code. So now you have a single IDE to debug still your HMI as well as your real-time code. And what's also nice is we've replaced the proprietary communications between the two environments with shared memory. And this shared memory is still under Visual Studio to debug and to look at. So again, very streamlined debugging environment, a lot more straightforward and easier to track down some very tricky situations. So big transformation by using RTX 2012. Okay, So let's go ahead and talk about what we'll do in uh, video one. So if you look here, we're going to do some single process debugging. So we're going to set up a periodic timer. We're going to attach to this running process. And then we're going to go over some of the advanced hardware breakpoints inside of Visual Studio thanks to the plugin. So we'll do some memory. We'll look at some function and file breakpoints, conditional and et cetera. And then we'll summarize some of the benefits. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and open a new project. So we go to File, New, Project. And then now we have the Project Wizard. So we're going to select RTX application, and we're going to leave the default names, RTX App 1, and click OK. And so now, here we have the RTX application wizard has started. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And we're going to leave most of these the same, but we're going to add multi-threaded C runtime support in case we want some printfs. So we'll go ahead and change that and click Next. And in this case, we're going to add a software framework. So we'll go ahead and check that box. And we're going to add the code for a periodic timer thread. So go ahead and check that and click Finish. And so here our project's been created. Let's go ahead and just explore the code a little bit. It's, it's pretty straightforward. There are comments throughout. And just to start out here, here is the period for our periodic timer. So you can see here by default, it's set up for 500 microseconds. This is a little too fast for us because we'll be wanting to do a printf. So we're going to go ahead and change this to every 500 milliseconds. So I'm going to add some zeros there. And the reason why, you'll see here, uh, this is in terms of 100 nanoseconds. So the easiest way to calculate this is ignore the first zero here. And here you can see it's 500 thousand microseconds or 500 milliseconds, okay? And so let's go ahead and scroll down here. And this is where we're in here under your program code, we're going to add a sleep function. So this sleep function is so that the periodic function will run for a while. So let's go ahead and add that. And we'll run for 100,000 milliseconds or 100 seconds. And let's go to the functions.c file. And here, let's go ahead and add a printf statement inside of the timer handler. Okay, So every time we hit 500 
milliseconds, we're going to hit this timer handler and we're going to do a printf. Okay, so we go ahead and inserted that. So now, that's the only changes I'm going to do to this, and now we're going to go ahead and build the solution. Okay, so now that we've built, let's go ahead and run the application. So we're going to go here to debug, and we're going to do start without debugging. So the reason why I want to do this one is one of the nice new features of, of Visual Studio and RTX is the fact that you can attach to a running process, which is very helpful in real-world applications. So let's go ahead and start it. And if you see here, it's actually running. Here's our printf. So we're in the timer handler, so every 500 milliseconds we're printing something out. And let's go ahead and attach to the process. So if we go back to Visual Studio, we're going to go to debug, attach the process. And here are the list of available processes. If we scroll down, here we'll see here's the name of our executable or our process, RTX app onertss So let's go ahead and attach. And you see here, we know we're attached. We actually stopped at a breakpoint I had here at the printf. So, so this is great. So this is one way, again, to attach to a running process. Again, in a real-world application, you're not going to be launching all of your applications directly from Visual Studio. So now this is really nice because now we can just hit function 5. You can see that I'm hitting that breakpoint every time. And then once you're finished doing debugging, you can go back to debug here and you can go to detach all. So here now detached all, the debugger is disconnected from the process and now it continues to run until completion. So again, really nice feature. So here you go ahead and right click on the breakpoint and now you'll get this sub menu where you'll, you'll see some of the more advanced breakpoint features here. So here you see the location, you have conditional breakpoints, a hit count, a filter, you have even a when hit and edit label. So let's go through each one of those in more detail. So if we click on the file breakpoint, you'll see here that it brings up a dialog box where you can fill in the exact file location, the line location, and character that you want that breakpoint to be set in. So you can go ahead and manually set the entry point for that breakpoint and click OK. So when you go to the breakpoint condition, here's a conditional breakpoint. In our case, we're going to use this. So if you see here, we go ahead and check the condition, and we set it up to watch our variable called count, and we want us hit the breakpoint when count is greater than 5. And we want this to be a true statement. So go ahead and click OK here. And so in this case, this is saying you can actually have a hit count with the breakpoint. So for example, you might hit a breakpoint often, right? This might be a piece of code that is all throughout the application, but you really have some criteria on how many times you want this code to be run through before it actually stops. So you can actually set the criteria here when the breakpoint is hit, break always, which is the default, or you can say when the hit count is equal to a certain number, or when it's a multiple of, or when it's greater or equal to maybe 100 times. So you can start filtering you know, how you want this breakpoint to be executed. And so in some conditions, you might want to have a filter, a more advanced filter on the breakpoint. So again, you might have a line of code that is all throughout the application. So here you can set up criteria, for example. I don't want to stop at this breakpoint unless it's under this machine name, in this process ID, under this process name, inside of this thread. So you can have some very specific features wrapped around that specific breakpoint. So in this window here, you can select what do you want printed out when you hit that breakpoint? So in our case, we're going to use this. So we're going to check print a message, and we're going to print out the message count is greater than 5. So that's the conditional breakpoint we set. And you can also run a macro, and then in, by default, it actually continues execution. We're going to uncheck that because we want the application to stop as well as print out the message. And then finally, with uh, some of the more advanced features, you can edit the breakpoint labels. So you might have dozens upon dozens of breakpoints in your application, and so you can have specific names and labels that go along with them to help associate the issues and to maybe, again, keep track of some maybe some tricky breakpoints that you're trying to debug with. So let's go ahead and go to debug and start debugging. And of course, we could run this free and attach to a process, but we'll go ahead and do it this way just for the sake of time. 
So now we're, go we're running and you can see count here going and here we hit count equal five and we halted at that conditional breakpoint. And what's nice too is we got our little printout message on the output window that the count is greater than five. So this is again really great. You can use these you know, conditional type breakpoints and all the, the flexibility with it to really help to debug some very tricky situations. And again, you can always attach to a running process as well, which is probably the more realistic way of debugging an application. So in closing, I'll go ahead and show you the last type of breakpoint is if you go under debug new breakpoint, there's a new item here called data breakpoint. So if you go here, you can enter in a specific memory address. So this is very helpful when you're maybe trying to monitor a particular area, a region, or maybe a particular variable when it's being accessed, and then at that moment when it's being accessed is when you want the application or process to be halted. So this is again helpful for the tricky things. Maybe you're trying to monitor a stack overflow situation or something like that. So again, so a lot of flexibility with the, the breakpoints within Visual Studio and, and RTX and they'll help you to debug some very tricky applications. So we've covered a lot of ground here in video one. So let me just highlight some of the key spots that we covered inside of this video. So because RTX 2012 fully leverages Visual Studio thanks to a plugin, we're able to use Visual Studio, a full integrated development environment, as the full debugging environment for both your non-real-time, your user interface, as well as your real-time applications with RTX. So again, a single IDE for all of your debugging for your entire application. Number two, attaching to a single process. So again, a more realistic way of doing debugging. The fact is you have a running system and you, you find a problem and you need to attach the debugger to it. So again, a very key feature of RTX combined with Visual Studio. And then finally, being able to leverage all of the hardware breakpoints that are intrinsic and part of Visual Studio now fully extend all the way into the real-time space with RTX. So again, a lot of flexibility and control over helping you to debug some very tricky problems. So next up is video two where we'll talk about multi-process or multi-processor debugging and how to debug that kind of SMP or symmetric multiprocessing environment. So thanks a lot and hopefully you stay tuned.